Welcome everyone again to a Love Darts exclusive interview. Today I am thrilled to be joined by Aaron Beanie. Aaron received his tour card this year and signed with one of my favourite brands, Loxley Darts, the darts manufacturer based in Nottingham, I believe. Well, Sherwood Forest, who knows? Uh, their theme, obviously, is Robin of Loxley, Robin Hood, and welcome, Mr. Bean. E. <laughs> <laughs> I see you did that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Aaron... Um, I must begin our chat by saying well done because obviously having uh, having your professional darts tour card is wonderful and I imagine that whilst your excited little heart has probably settled down a little bit, it's still feeling very new and tingly uh, to have a tour card, signing for a new great company and being amongst the big guys at the top of the game. Yes, uh, odd to say the least. It did take a lot of settling in, especially like with... COVID-19 kicking in and then everything kind of coming to a sudden halt just just as I'm getting in there. Yeah, uh, I imagine that's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's, it's kind of like this absolute nobody winning the tour card just upset the balance of the entire universe. I don't know. Like, I maybe kind of maybe you were the cause of COVID. <laughs> yeah. like, I just, that is, the balance of somewhere in the universe has been thrown out because I shouldn't be where I am. And now it, I, I we need to just stop the planet for a moment. Reset. <laughs> That's a complete lie because I've seen you play and you're a very good player. So you, uh, you deserve to be where you are now. Where were you when you heard that you'd been awarded your tour card? And uh, who did you, who'd you phone first? Who'd you tell the news? How'd you celebrate? <laughs> so, um, yeah, the whole Q school was interesting for me. Uh, I went, like, I roomed up with someone who I believe you know, Matt Finch. Yeah, legend. Um, I was crap for two days. He played all right. I literally had to be dragged kicking and screaming by him because I said, I don't want to play. I'm not enjoying it. I hate it. He dragged me there. Uh, didn't really want to play um, on the Saturday. And yeah, I just kept winning games. And... I love, I, I have watched back the footage of me winning that final uh, against poor Jared uh, with that 87 on the bullseye. And yeah, even I watched myself on that video and think, yeah, my face literally just says, oh my God, what have I done? Uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was really strange. Like from hitting that bullseye, um, shaking hands with the chalker and Jared, I had like, I took my darts out, turned around, and there was Mark McGinney, of all people. He's like, right, come across the barrier, shook my hand. He's like, congratulations, welcome to the PDC. And I, oh, no, yeah, I am. Well, yeah. I'm in the PDC. <laughs> and then I, turn around, then I turn around, and there's Dan Dawson and a camera. And he's like, do, I, uh, do you mind if we do a quick interview? I've literally still not got words like, okay. <laughs> and it, like everything just happened so fast. And it's just like, have I really just got a tour card? I must have. Dan Dawson's telling me I have. So you've literally um, gone, bullseye. Oh, come on, come on. Brilliant. Let's get you over here and we'll do everything. Uh, uh, what? What? <laughs> honestly, less, it must have been less than two minutes. Wow. Um, like, yeah, Matt tried to come and shake my hand, but McGinney was already there. And then Dan Dawson was there. And Matt just turned around and walked away. But I'll go get a drink. Because <laughs> he, he was there with me. He was supporting me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very bizarre. Who's the first person um, you told? First, so first person that I called was my mum. Uh, I was like, I phoned my mum. I was like, mum, 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 mum. Like, did you see? She's like, see what? Like, you know, I'm a kid, too, right? And she's like, oh yeah, but you know, like, I watched your game yesterday, and I just, I, I was, I was busy. I just, like, mum, I've won a tour card. Oh really? That was it. She's like, phone your dad. Phone your dad. He's at work. <laughs> dad, like. Yeah, right, Dad, do you send anything on uh, Darts Connect about Q School or like anything? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm just watching a film because he's a lorry driver. <laughs> so he was at work, but he was parked up. And uh, I found my tour card. He went, what? I found my tour card, Dad. No. Yeah, literally, Mum and Dad didn't, didn't even know, weren't watching. <laughs> and both of them just seemed absolutely shocked. Like, have you really? Yes, I am really not winding you up. This has happened. <laughs> <laughs> I know the exact same thing, not on the same scale of yours at all, but I, 
I did one of the Riley's qualifiers and I was expecting to, you know, maybe get through one round. I'd improved a, a bit and I was thinking, yep, you know, there's a lot of county players, a lot of Super League players, you know. And anyway, I got I got through to like, you know, I played, you know, my fourth game. I'm like, God, I've done all right here. So I, I called my mum and dad up and I uh, said, oh, I'm round of the fourth round. They go, where are you? I went, I went to the tournament that I told you about to play darts. Like, oh, well done. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, don't worry. <laughs> I know how you feel. I know how you feel. And how did you celebrate? Um, so you don't <laughs> have to say. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, no. Um, so there was. There's obviously like often people around like looking to sponsor, scout, and stuff. And uh, a very nice man who owns a dart shop. Um. Invite, invited me and Matt over to give us a, a lift and he's like come on we'll go get something to eat so we, we went to a restaurant we had pizza I had, I had an entire pizza to myself a couple of beers like my phone was just going nuts um, I think in the space of four hours I had received over 250 messages um, like just ridiculous like I just had to put the phone down like I, I hadn't looked Matt or um uh, Paul in the eye like we, I've been in the car we've gone for a meal like we've got changed gone for a meal like, and I've not even looked him in the face like my phone's just going like oh, I can't keep up with this and then um, something really weird happened so I've literally won a tour card maybe two hours earlier I'm still absolutely on cloud nine my phone just is jumping off the table and uh all of a sudden, two guys come up to the table. Like, there's me, Matt, and Paul. Uh, you're Aaron Beanie, aren't you? Yeah. Like, you did you just win a tour card today? Like, were you there? Like, no, but we got friends there, and like, like we recognised you because they. Like, it's that. Okay, like, can we get a photo? <laughs> like, this is so weird. Like, <laughs> Cheesy uh, grin. Like, <laughs> Okay, like, you know, right? So these two guys had a like had a photo of me in a pizza place up in Wigan, and it's just like, okay, this is not what I expected, and um, yeah, things just got even weirder from there. To be honest, <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. I know that uh, we had we had um, obviously I, I get a lot of messages for all the stuff that's going on with darts, and we had a um, group chat going on and. My local team have just messaged going, you know, Aaron's gone and got a tour card, didn't you? Oh, brilliant, brilliant, way great stuff. Whoa. So um, I can only imagine what your phone must have been doing. <laughs> uh, bonkers. Like, I had somewhere in the region of 400 new friend requests on Facebook. I probably recognised 30 of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, as soon as it happened, it's like everyone's searching the name, like friend request, friend request. Um, so yeah, I've got like 400 unanswered friend requests on Facebook. Like by the next morning, messages had hit kind of like 800 across like Facebook Messenger, text message, WhatsApp. Oh, like, yeah, I just had to put the phone away. <laughs> Wouldn't have got to sleep otherwise. <laughs> yeah, like, that's that's got to go. I phoned my mum. I phoned my dad. That do. I mean, for, for many of us, um, dart enthusiasts, Q school is, is obviously the first step towards the dream. So, you know, what, what happens immediately afterwards? I mean, you say they obviously say welcome to the PDC, but, you know, what, what happens? What, do you, what, what would someone expect to happen as soon as they, that's happened? Do so someone contact you? Do you get paperwork through? What, what, what's the next steps? Um, you know, like for the, the first kind of six to eight weeks afterwards, I'm not going to lie, total blur, but like expect to have a camera in your face within like 90 seconds of that winning double going in. Mm -hmm. uh, expect that straight away. That was a bit of a shock. Um, and then you literally, so that's it. It just kind of, you, you then just leave like it's a normal day. Yeah. Like, okay. Um, and the the following day, so I went back to the venue with Matt. Like he supported me for the whole day. I'm going to be there for him, do the bar run. And um, <laughs> I turned up, and I had to be signed in as Matt's guest. 
like because I was no longer a player, so I went on the list to it. No, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. so I, I was here yesterday. Him. I did quite well. <laughs> I, don't know, like, 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 I, I know I'm not famous, but I kind of did something good yesterday. Like right here. Like you, you, you were all here. You all yeah. saw it. You should know. <laughs> like, so yeah, I had to be signed in as a guest, and um, later that day, um, I say one of the first things that happened to you is you will be scouted out by Alan Warner, and he 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 like basically says like, oh yeah, at some point, I need like twenty thirty minutes with you. Just come sit down. And like okay, and so, like at that point, it was quite early on in the morning. Like everything's just kind of getting going. So just again, just reams of people like, oh, well done for yesterday, well done for yesterday. Like my arm was tired. I, be- I could barely pick my beer up through handshakes. <laughs> and um <laughs> so Alan's like, Yeah, that, when it when it quiets down, come and see me. And then yeah, you kind of you get a little bit of a, a mini induction to the PDPA. Uh, it tells you kind of like do this, do that, do this. Um, take some don't, details. Don't do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the the don't do this part is so when you're on there, make sure you look at the DRA stuff. Okay. And um, there's like a an online um, like module for gambling integrity. Okay, that's good. As, as that's a good professional to sports, as a professional sportsman, you have to do that. Pass that. So that's obviously because it was something well, that I, I, something I brought up with, uh, with, with the Wayne Mardle interview was talking about, um, you know, the, the problem with, with, with betting and people, you know, getting to, getting to younger players or, or to older players and influencing them and making them throw, throw things. So I mean, um, if if they do the modules, that's quite high profile cases recently. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, it's good to know that they they're doing a module and there there is that kind of awareness. So, do you have to go you you go through it and then it's just sort of signed off that you've you've read it and understood it and yeah, no, it's, it's actually a, a pass or fail thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like you get two attempts at it. So yeah, you have what to happens do if that. you don't? If you don't pass, <laughs> you lose well, your talk card. Luckily, <laughs> luckily enough, I I don't know. I did. Yeah. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I done all right. Um, but yeah, no, you have to like print the certificate off and let them like let someone at the PDC know. Yeah, done. Here it is. Um, You've passed. Yeah, you are a pro player now. Yeah, like that's about it. And then you do get. I say there's a few things like the signing onto the PDPA website. You have to then there's a like, an extra payment like you pay for your Q school, and if you do get a tour card, there's an extra payment to mm-hmm. like increase your membership but yes yeah, it's, it's very minimal what actually happens straight after it's very casual um so is day one then literally i assume then you know the next events that you're uh, viable to play for you then would register for those turn up and then that's it day one i'm here well no no there is an actual induction okay so before the first pro tour weekend yeah, you do like you have to register for all the tournaments online as well, so they know who's coming. And because obviously, if people, if there are people that from 128 tour card holders that can't attend, mm. they backfill from order of merit of challenge tour, development tour, okay. such like. So they have to know who's going, so you register. But yeah, that first pro tour weekend, um, as a newbie, that's both like the UK and, um, the rest of the world Q schools um, <clears throat> you all go to a, an induction where you get some booklets you sit you listen to a few different people talk about what to expect and yeah so everyone who's who's got through and is in this induction and you're all sat there and all very yeah. proud of yourselves having done well and uh, you're like back yeah. at school then <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just sat there like Getting get the talk, meeting the people, and I say that like, looking the, for the bar. Yeah, <laughs> the, the list of people. I mean, like, I'm sat there in the tour card induction. I've got Damon Hetter behind me, um, Jeff Smith's just in front of me. You know, like you're looking around, and you're thinking these are some these are some big names. Yeah, yeah. And I'm one of them. There you go. <laughs> what the hell? And it does. <laughs> it all starts to dawn on you. 
Um, <laughs> and then, like, you know, like the following, like the next, the next day, midday tomorrow, that's it. That's you, that's your first ever PDC match. Did you feel nervous when you're in that room meeting those, meeting those people? You've obviously got all those big names around you as well. Yeah. Like I, it, for a long time, I always felt like I can't, I can't just walk up and talk to these people. Like mm. these, these are, these are televised starting superstars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, but yeah, that, that kind of settles down and you start to realize that like, we're all here for the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who was the most welcoming? Um, on that first day, the most welcoming was actually someone I'd met two years previously at Q School 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd spent a good couple of hours on the same practice board and chatting. And then when I've arrived, like the day for my induction, so the day before the first tournament, um, outside having a cigarette, it was Nathan Aspinall. Nice. He won his tour card uh, Q School 2018, which I attended. And like I say, I met him there. Nice guy. And yeah, like one of the first people I met was Nathan. And he's like, congrats. Like, blah, blah. And we ended up chatting for a while. Like, he literally had all the time in the world for me. And I was like, I don't know if you remember, but when you won your tour card, he went, I knew you looked familiar. And yeah. And yeah. to this, like, every time I see Nathan, it's it's never it's not just like a passing hello. Like Nathan is genuinely a nice chatty guy. Yeah, like, we always have a conversation. He kind of checks in how I'm doing. He's like, "Are you finding it? Like you playing?" But like, he tells me my results. So he's like keeping an eye on it. Yeah, he was so after my first win, he was one of the first people to come and find me and say, "Well done, like if, congratulate if you've done it." Like uh, that's great. Like, on now. Yeah. yeah, Nathan Aspinall has been one of the superstars for me. I mean, I'm um, I'm not a huge uh, huge football fan. I watch it when it's on. I don't really follow any particular teams, but I would argue that um, that darts fans and people who are involved in darts, it can be some of the best community kind of stuff. And people generally, like you say, it's not just a oh well, I'm eight and it's just a passing thing. That you know, people know they 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 they. they they listen to you and they are a little bit more involved. So uh, it's nice to know that it's kind of still there in that top level. And uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Oh, that's uh, great. Who, um, now, I believe that you befriended Peter Wright, Devin Peterson, <laughs> Matt Edgar, <clears throat> and a few others who've like helped support you when you first started out in the professional game, right? Yeah. Um, Devin Peterson was the first. Um there was a lot of kind of like praise and just like brilliant. What a story when I won my like tour card, you know, there's a lot of real positivity, but there was also a good pocket of like, he's never going to survive. He didn't hit a 90 average all day. What a waste of a tour card. Like this no, he's not going to do anything. And the person that jumped on social media and was just literally defending me without ever meeting me was Devin Peterson. And um, like people were sending me screenshots of what Devin had been writing online and like how he'd been backing me. So I was like, this is, this is brilliant. So I, I, I scoured Facebook trying to find like the actual Devin Peterson. I was like, I don't know if this is you or if it's just a fan thing, but like, if it is you, I like, literally can't thank you enough. I've seen what you've been writing. And yeah, lo and behold, like within 30 minutes, I've got a response and it is actually Devin Peterson um, actually saying like that. Nah. And that was it. We got chatting. And then, yeah, like the first Pro Tour weekend, he come and found me. He um, he don't like, cause he, he's got a YouTube thing as well. He's done a little mm-hmm. thing on me as what there. Yeah, like Devin was straight on it, defending me. Like, it, like it's just like, you are me back when I started. He's like, don't give up, don't give in. The man, the man is literally walking positivity. Mm. But it's that's a that's a huge lump of positivity. He's a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> he comes he comes yeah. across great. I mean, obviously he's a he's a crowd favorite. He's um he enjoys his darts and uh, I think you know he's 
he's really found that something extra and is uh, is performing well. So it's uh, it's it's been it's been really nice to see as well. And um, Peter Wright. Uh, yeah, interesting story. So <laughs> obviously, like found well, say I found a manager. A manager found me like um, early on. It was actually someone who I'd met previously. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a long story, but Dean Moss, what a legend. Literally couldn't have asked for a better manager. The guy's fantastic. So he's not only, like I said, like, gone to that induction with me, like he's going to be there for the first weekend. He actually picked me up from my home, drove me there, like, literally settled settled me in, like, because he knows a lot of the people. He's been around the dart scene for forever. He loves it. And everyone loves him. He's just one of them guys. So he kind of knows Peter Wright and Joe from like old BDO days and what have you. Anyway, so yeah, day one, Pro Tour, first ever one. I'm walking in and it's just like, like I'm queuing at the bar behind Girl with Price. Like, oh my God, it's going to <laughs> Go to the toilet and. Can't get around him easily either. So. <laughs> Go to the toilet and like, go find the empty urine, and when you got John Anderson to your left, James Way to your right, like, I don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> go out for a cigarette, and there's Gary Anderson and Jamie, um, Adrian Lewis, um, you know Darren Webster. It's just like this every, everywhere I turn, like there's just superstars. But so the room is so tempted. Back. Like, do I ask for an autograph while I'm here? Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> I'm in there. <laughs> Like it's, like it's just it's just a just shock. It's like, oh my god, I'm actually here. Yeah, like, this is I'm real. But um, I'm I'm not I'm not great in the mornings. So by the time I got up and got to the venue, um, it turns out a lot of the guys get there early. Like they warm <laughs> up, right? So we got there, and most of the tables are full. Yeah, and uh, the table with enough space for like three of us to sit down. Happens to be Peter Wright, like his table. So we, Dean's like, oh, do you mind if we sit? Like, no, no, go ahead. And that's it. Got, got chatting to Peter. Um, like, got it, Dean done introductions. And it's just like, what do you say to the current world champion? Mm. Like, <laughs> um, but no, like, again, what a nice guy. Mm. So helpful. Like, of course, he was looking at my darts and saying, oh, no, you, what you need is new darts. This, like, Yeah, of course you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like the way he talks, like he's passionate about the darts and everything. Like, And, um, yeah, he's like just giving advice, like trying to make me feel welcome, settle me in, to a point that Joe went, will you stop? Because you're going to make him good and then he'll beat you. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I don't. I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like so, I spent the day at the table, and like again, like what? Do, what do I even say to the reigning world champion? Like this is Peter Wright without the big mohawk because he, he only does that for TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I see him with the fluffy hair down here. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the fluffy down of hair. Yeah, but yeah, like. Peter Wright immediately just made me feel welcome. Devin Peterson, like, just literally jogged him off defence on social media. Nathan Aspinall. Like, literally everyone. It's incredible the welcome you get. It is yeah. like a big touring family. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone has to start somewhere, so they've all been there at some point as well. So, you know, it's yeah. nice that they don't take that, uh, that go that level higher and sort of go, well, you know not going to bother it's nice to nice to know that even the world champion has time for welcoming the new and helping and, say, uh, like, got the bookends at the table the the world champion and this random pub player that lucked in like we are the bookends <laughs> of the order of merit like, it's all yeah. like, oh. they should make it that you two do sit together you know every year like the champion <laughs> and the newbie <laughs> mm. now i've had a look over your recent results now You've played some extremely good players. I think we've got Max I, Hopp, Dimitri I'm Vandenberg, Yella Klaassen. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, like, since the like the 
creation of Loxley and the signing. Um, I, I, I do. I've got to know Ryan and Matt quite well. Um, Ryan Sell literally looked me in the eye at the, I think it was the Autumn Series, and he just looked me in the eye and he went, you have the worst draws ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one day you're going to get a good draw. Like, I doubt it. Because like, I was like, um, the Winter Series that just happened, um, it it become a bit of a joke again. It's like, you know what? You've not been drawn against the board seed. Have I not? No, no, you ain't got the board seed. Yeah, Dimitri Vandenberg's not seeded for this event. <laughs> oh, yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. I haven't got the board seed. Yay. Uh, who else we got here? Martin Schindler, Sulovich, Durant. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, so, so you know, <laughs> when you're thinking... Yeah, the results aren't necessarily coming. Well, I mean, the caliber of player that you're playing against, if you're taking legs, if you're doing, you know, doing anything like that, you're doing well. So don't worry, don't worry the results will come. Yeah, no, that's that's the only thing that's keeping me positive is that I am playing these top guys and I am winning legs. And most games, I'm winning a leg against throw as well. So it's like, right, it's in there. I've got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What I haven't got is it consistently... Um, but yeah, I mean, amongst all of that, uh, the Martin Schindler game, um, I was playing really well, but so was Martin. Mm. And by leg four or five, um, Martin Schindler in the middle of the match was just giggling. He was laughing um, purely because he literally could not miss tops if he threw with his opposite hand blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> and, one of those but, days <laughs> but he just rec- like he recognised it it's like right I've outscored Martin Schindler I am on a two data no treble required mm-hmm. and he'd go treble treble tops and he's just like Phew. like Phew. and then like the next leg he's like right I've outscored Martin Schindler again and he'd go treble single tops mm. oh will you go away but he's, he found it hilarious he's like I just couldn't miss yeah Again, like after the match, me and him had a really good conversation. It was just one of them. He's like, I just could not miss. He's like, I know, I know. I was stood there watching you thinking, well, <laughs> yeah, I've got this one. I was there. <laughs> no, I haven't got this one. But no, you say about my draws. Like, we, we spoke about my first weekend, done that induction. Yeah, day one. Who do I get? Oh, yeah. 16th seed, Joe Cullen. Welcome to the PDC. Thanks. Excellent. Yep, there's no then, <laughs> there's no soft landing. <laughs> no, and then like it's like right, it's got to get easier tomorrow. They did make it a little bit easier. Yeah, they gave me like I think world ranked eighteen, Stephen Bunting. Yeah, but that they didn't want to make it too easy, so they put me on the live stream. Let's let's just make sure, you know, it's a little bit nervy. Yep. Thanks. Oh, interesting story. Peter Wright actually watched my live stream game. And do you know what he said when I come out of the... Because you're in like a separate booth. Mm. Oh, Parson Peter Wright was stood there and he went, your darts are too heavy, you need like a tart. And what were you throwing what at the time? Uh, 27 gram. Ooh, okay, nice. That's heavy. And they're the, they're the darts I'd been throwing for 13 years. Yeah. The only wow. set I'd had. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, tell us about your, your first win. Because, I mean, I bet you're absolutely buzzing. Do you know the date? No. Friday, the 10th of July. Who did you beat? Scott Waits. Scott Waits, 6-5. Fantastic. Yeah. We were thrilled. Last leg to side. Uh, it's like Q school all over again. <laughs> How did um, you feel? Uh, exhausted, numb, like... The interview was great. We could see raw emotion. It's like when, you know, when when you get the excited newcomer, it was exactly that. The excited newcomer coming in and going, yeah, I, I haven't got any of this, um, you know, perfectly polished, this is how I'm going to be. I'm just going to tell exactly how I feel. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and my favourite bit of the interview is uh, Scott, one of the, like... Coming through what, the like, door. <laughs> yeah, coming out of the toilet. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> 
I what saw you it? look around with a little smile. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't break though. I remained professional. You did. You did. It was <laughs> no. It was. It wasn't not a professional interview at all. It was a professional interview, but you could see how much it meant to you and how excited you were about it. And I think that um, endeared you to a lot of a lot of new people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like I say, like I say, I have really, really bad draws. Like. The, don't get me wrong, there's no good draws, to be honest, but I literally got all of the... I think I've played most of the top season players, like, mm -hmm. really. Um, very few of those kind of, like, new tour card holders like myself. But, yeah, and this is Scott Waits. Like, this man has won Lakeside twice. Not only that, he's the only person to go from the BDO to win the Grand Slam. So he can do it on the PDC stage as well. Like anyone that wants to talk about the talent differential between PDC and BDO, like that man's done them both. Like, um, not gonna lie, he was struggling. Like, it, I, I was taking advantage of his bad darts, but then he would throw good darts, and it's like ah, so like, just it was just. Yeah, I had upped my game a bit and his had dipped mm. to a point where it was competitive and it did deserve a last leg decider. <coughs> um, but yeah, hitting that double, I, I just, yeah, like, it's weird. You feel hollow. Like, it's like, this ain't even my arm. I can't feel the dart. Like, just, just look at the target. Go. It's gone in. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, yeah, it was one of them. Like, I'd love to say I was cool, calm, composed. I was not. Like, it was, it was a nervy moment. It really was. Have you had any, um, any wow moments from from meeting people? I mean, uh, obviously, I'm I'm not in your position, but uh, uh, we went to um, we went to Norwich to uh, an exhibition. And um, we went and got some food. We were there a bit early. We went around the back and because a friend of mine was like, do you know what? I think all the players come in around this side. So we thought, oh, we'll, walk, we'll walk back via the back entrance. And um, this car comes past and it's sort of blacked out windows. And I see this guy in the front. I'm like, oh, I rec recognize him. And uh, my captain, Ben, turned around and goes, that, that's, that, that's Phil Taylor's uh, bodyguard. That's Phil Taylor's bodyguard. And, and the car stopped. He gets out and we're all like scrambling to get our phones. We're like, Phil, 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 Phil. We try really hard. And, uh, you know, um, I, I've met, I've met quite a few uh, celebrities in my, in my time and I, I've never felt such kind of, it's Phil Taylor. He, he really had that kind of wow yeah. factor for me. Have you had any moments like that since you've been there that you've, you've had to cover up? Um. Yeah, literally the first three Pro Tour weekends. It's just like that. Like it's, like it's it's everywhere. Like because you 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 can pay to go to these tournaments, these exhibitions, and that like, you see them up there on the stage. They like you see them doing their thing. You see them walk past. Like I'm actually like I say, just doing really normal things like queuing for a beer, um, going to the toilet. Like, you know, you, you, you go to, like, go out for a, a cigarette or something, and there's, like, you've actually got someone like, I don't know, James Wade holding the door open for you. Like, it's just like, thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, like, it's, it's more surreal being a part of it because it's not like you're there just to watch them do what they do. Yeah. Like, you're there like you're on the practice board just listening to everyone talk about just normal life yeah. like jo jovial stories like something stupid that happened in the hotel room the night before mm. um, Adrian Lewis <laughs> that man is hilarious yeah hilarious. I've played um, him a few times on the Nexus he seems really down to earth he's hilarious yeah. <laughs> I've got time for him um, <laughs> Like the best game I've ever played in the PDC, my only 90 plus average, Adrian Lewis was the one chalking it. <laughs> nice. 
because it's COVID rules, so the, there's no officials. So yeah, yeah. Like it's, you, know, you you mark your own boards. But yeah, Adrian Lewis chalked my best ever game. So uh, God, I could, let's, let's, that was probably the moment, actually, the one where, as a two-time world champion, typing in my 180. Yes. yes. <laughs> 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 That's fantastic. Um, right, yeah. What what are your goals moving forward? Obviously, you know, I, I don't want to be like world champion. You know, that's that's all always your sort of your dream and everything as a player. Anyway, what what are your realistic goals that you set for yourself over the next say year? Um, I mean, th- my goal is top sixty four. I I love being on the tour. Like, I honestly, everyone is so nice. Everyone, like, the laughs are great. Like, the doing stuff like this, like the interviews, is great. Mm. Like, I, I really thoroughly enjoy it. Um, don't get me wrong, it has its bad days. If you play rubbish, you walk away, and that does sit with bad, like, bad with me. But most, like, most days are brilliant. I don't want to leave the tour, I want to make top 64. But, you know, the small goals. Um, every time I've played in a qualifier, whether it be for a Euro Tour, the Grand Slam qualifier, the World's qualifier, I've literally been pathetic. I don't know why. Um, on just the normal Pro Tour events, I am i don't shake anymore. Like, it's a game of darts. I do all right. Um, and people are noticing, like... I'm no longer looked at like free money. People realize that they have to earn it now. Mm-hmm. Like they actually have to beat me because I will take my chances. Well, that's good. That's step um, one, right? Yeah. So I'm no longer seen as free money. Don't get me wrong. Most of them still beat me and will continue to beat me, but I'm getting better and they know they have to beat me. I'm not just going to roll over and let it happen unless it's a qualifier. Mm. I've I've been awful in all the qualifying events. Um, I really let myself down at the world's qualifier. Um, still gutted about that. And I was throwing really good darts on the practice board, really confident. Game on, I was trembling like a leaf, horrible. Mm-hmm. And I do it every qualifier. So that hurdle I need to get over. I want to qualify for something, anything, Euro Tour, whatever. Get for a qualifier. And break my duck of, you know, get into round three, win two games in a day. Yeah. They're um, perfectly reasonable and uh, and achievable goals. I'm sure you can do that. Yeah. It's finding, I mean, it's like, finding that comfort, right? You've just got to be comfortable at the hockey and play your game. Because I think once you're in that position, you know, your darts will start talking for you, right? Absolutely. It's my consistency with the scoring. Um, I've had a couple of games where my finishing's been bad, but normally... My finishing gets me out of trouble. Like, mm. I'm, I'm good on my finishes. Um, but like I say, winning that second round game ain't going to be easy. I mean, after beating Scott Waits, I was, you know, my, my reward was Jose D'Souza. <laughs> Who's but he? I took, yeah, <laughs> the special one. Um, I, I, took, I took two legs off of him. Yeah. And this was, this was him. Like around, around the time he got his first Pro Tour win, and then he yeah, just yeah. kept getting better. Like it were not an out of sorts, Jose. I got two legs off of him. Yeah. Um, and then I had a second round game against Martin Kleermacher. I had the pressure on him. Mm. I think I missed. I think I missed darts to go three nil up with, and that's. I think that was two breaks of throw. If I, I think, mm. like. I, I, you know, it's, it's there. I'm not, you don't, you, you don't get lucky with the draw in round two ever. No, no, no. Um, but again, I'm winning legs. I There's no easy rides. The ride. There's no easy no. rides where you, where you are, you know, at the end of the day, I think you're, you're like you say, if you can get comfortable and throw your darts, that's when you're going to start, you know, the results are going to come. Yeah. But yeah now, get around to qualify for something. Absolutely. Well, We'll, we'll look forward to when that happens. Now, many of them, many of my viewers will not know this, but Aaron 
played in, and I'm not too sure if he actually still does, obviously with his life changing around, but played in the local leagues here in Camden, which is where I am, called the Archway and District League. Now, I've actually seen him on a couple of matches before the, before all this big stuff started to happen for you. And I thought to myself, he's Andy. Yeah, we'll, 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 have a, we'll have a bit of a tough game here. Now, I only got to play you, I think, uh, in a 6v6 match because it's not really proper darts in the format that we play there. It's a very different feel from your darting life now, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very, very, very different. Um, now, when... How many uh, you do with people you've actually played against, though? <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. Um I mean, I I, uh, I did training with, with Wayne Mardell last... I keep saying Wayne Mardell. People are going to be like, he's just in love with Wayne Mardell. But I went training uh, I went training with Wayne Mardell in... Uh, well, I'm going to say Wayne Mardell. I'll just say Wayne from now on. This is just starting to sound weird, right? Um, I went training <laughs> at Wayne's in November last year. And uh, obviously, you know, you get to... I didn't have a game against him or anything, but you're throwing against him. So uh, so when I did the interview last month with him, um, that was, it was quite a... But I think, you know, it's nice to, yeah. to start, like you say, it's it's not just um, my, my first sort of real experience with was when the Nexus came out um, and I played Adrian Lewis, I played uh, Stephen Bunting, I played Leighton Bennett, you know, and, and it connects and you can talk to these people and you're like, hi, yeah, please don't beat me too badly, but nice to meet you. <laughs> and, they, they, you know, they play against you, but it's uh, it's. It, it's a wonderful thing, and I think that darts is a very accessible sport to those top, um, those top tiers and top performers. Um, I, I've never experienced anything like, you know, at the Alley Pally. You're, you're you're there. You're right next to people and right next to players and e- even people who aren't, you know, <laughs> who aren't actually in the tournament. You've got oh, hold on, um, he's yeah, I recognise him. Recognise him. He played yeah yeah. yeah. And everyone's there and they're all willing to have a good time. There's no sort of them against us. You have tables, obviously, against the stands and things, but it's all banter and it's really good fun. If no one's been to the darts, obviously, I mean, you're watching a darts channel, you will have been to the darts, um, oh, hopefully. Absolutely. Yeah. If you haven't, go. It's, there's nothing like it. It is a fantastic, fantastic time. And uh, we hope to see you at the Alley Pally very, very soon. And um, yeah, let's see. Let's see how things go. That could be my first trip past round two. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you the luck. I'm going to claim that it was me who gave you the relaxed confidence to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, whilst I was researching you, and it is research, it's not stalking, your <laughs> Wikipedia page. Oh, yeah, that's right. You have a Wikipedia page. Yeah, I know. It made is. it as well. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, come on. I was all excited saying, yeah, you got a Wikipedia page. It says you live in Kent. Now, what on earth are you doing in the Camden Area Leagues? Uh, that's where I've been working for the last, well, 13 years, since 2008. Uh, yeah, Pentonville Prison, Camden Area. Um, yeah, it was a long drive up from Kent, so <laughs> staying up in London these days, but. Yeah, been working in a prison service for 13 years. And that's a very unique and different job from from your from your sort of part-time job or semi you've got two full-time yeah. jobs really now. Yeah, that that's true. <laughs> yeah. I I also noticed on the Wikipedia page that you were born in 1984. Now, yeah, that is obviously the best year because that's when I'm born as well giving Indeed. yet further hope to me that there's still time for me. And with Peter Wright being 50, I mean, I've got plenty of time to develop and find that peak. <laughs> so there's plenty of time for us. Yeah, we, we've got, we've still got years left in us. We're not at our peak in our professional sport here. No, nope, not at all. We're going to get there. <laughs> you, you perform me and then I'll be knocking at your door again. Hi, can I sit on your table, champ? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. If you have floppy hair and everything, we'll just recreate it, all right? <laughs> Beautiful. I'm, I'm game. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, yeah. If I can become world champion, yeah, I'm more than happy with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do, do you miss pub darts? Uh, yes. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I certainly do, and I think that we've got a, a tougher deal 
with with COVID because obviously the professionals they've got the the interest and the money to be able to test people and be able to play. Now, obviously, there's so many people not able to play, but but there's something yeah. about playing pub darts. And uh, I know, obviously, you've taken that step up, but you know, do you do you really miss that? And and do you think it would be you know people treat you still the same coming back and playing in the local area? Uh, the ones I've met since, yeah, because there was a, a small opportunity between winning tour card and lockdown where we were still able to go to pubs and do it. Yeah. Um, basically my pub team have not treated me any differently. I probably get more abuse now than I did before. I was looking forward to playing you. I thought if if we get a chance to play, I'll give you some grief. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) You can give me grief on the dartboard, but you know. (laughs) The the worst bit of it was because I I was doing the London Super League and still doing the pub league on on the Thursday with you guys on Archway District. Um, After winning my tour card, like, well, pre winning my tour card, I was like second, I think second or third in the London Super League averages. I was like right up there. I was winning pub leagues. Like no one wanted to draw me. I was throwing really well. I won my tour card and I forgot how to throw for about for about six weeks. Like I don't know. Like everyone's like, oh no, I've got to play professional. And I'm like, uh, how do I hold this? I was awful. I had a big dip um, in the Super League. Like I was I was competing for the number one spot. Yeah, that that ended. Like I couldn't I couldn't buy a win. I don't know why it just really got into my head like oh no everyone's expecting me to throw really well now I never thought about it until that point it's, it's probably yeah, an adjustment no. period though right yeah I've got through that now yeah um, definitely got through that <laughs> I, yeah, I mean no, at, stuff, at least in the Super League you're playing a good format for those of you who don't know the Archway District format um, you might play in a night you might possibly get four games of that you'll get a one leg single a one leg double, a one leg fours, and a one leg sixes. If you're picked, so you don't really get a chance to um, to to get your rhythm going. Although, um, funny story, um, one of the, I think it is it the old oak or the royal oak. Royal oak, old yeah. Oak. Royal oak, it's the royal oak, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we we had an away game there, and it was just one of them nights where I was firing. Like I say, this was pre tour card and I nearly got thrown out um, because it I, I went out in 15 darts in my singles and I was like oh a ringer look at this guy and then it got to the fours um, they put me first like you're scoring really well so you start us off I went off with a 180 and then I, obviously the, the next three uh, there go it come back to me I went 180 <laughs> <laughs> I went, 180 180 and then um Bob after me finished Bob. it. Like, that's the pause Good man. old Bob. <laughs> Good old Bob. Bob all that he is. Um, so yeah, like we won that fours. Anyway, so the next fours went, and then it's the sixes, and they're like, right, go on, Beanie, you you got first again. I went 180. <laughs> so I went, I went three one eighties in three throws in, across two matches. Yeah. And anyway, like the other five have gone, it's come back to me. I've gone treble twenty, treble twenty, and all I heard was oh! Yeah, no, that, that ended up being a very small one close to the bullseye. <laughs> that, that's my greatest moment ever in pub darts. And <laughs> I honestly thought I was about to get thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> and don't come back. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what it was about that board. I just couldn't miss. It, it is good fun, though. <laughs> I mean, for, for those of us who um, who are getting into it, there's nothing better than entering into a pub team, having a bit of a laugh, creating some friends and just throwing some darts, you know? Yeah. Just banging her in between throws. It's not it's not quiet, it's not professional. No. You've often got you've often got a fruit machine like here. Yeah. So yeah. you've got all these twinkly lights, like you're trying to look at the board, which normally yeah. has, you know, bits of it are lumpy and coming away like yeah. And someone comes out of the toilet, which the door is right next to the board anyway, just to throw you <laughs> oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Standard. All the, all the hockey is at the entrance and you've got to wait for people to come in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Slattery's and um, the Sheep Haven. <laughs> you actually have to walk between the hockey and the board to get to the bar. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, Brilliant. sorry, yeah, don't mind us, don't mind us. Yep. <laughs> you could go treble 20, treble 20. 
What are you doing, mate? <laughs> Oh, you get the Guinness, are you? Get me one while you're there. Yeah. Someone strolls in with a wet dog. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or selling DVDs or something. <laughs> that happens a lot around here. What yeah, is that? yeah, it does. <laughs> now, um, we've talked about you moved into the professional game, but a big factor in that move and support came from the dynamic duo, a duo of Matt and Dom from Loxley Dance. Now, <laughs> talk to me about how that conversation came up. Um, so yeah, Matt and Dom. Um, so after that tour card induction on my first ever pro tour weekend, um, I was like proper Charlie in the chocolate factory, like kid at Christmas, like can't sleep, can't sleep, can't sleep. And, um, Dean was in a separate hotel. I had to be at the hotel where the, like the induction was happening. And so Dean's left me. I'm, I'm on my own. I'm in the room. Like, no, I can't sleep. I'm going to go down to the bar. So I go down to the bar and uh, there's Matt and Dom. And um, obviously they're clued up. They love darts. I mean, at the time they were, they were like running darts mad, the media thing. Um, I haven't made it clear, by the way. We're talking about the owners of Loxley Darts, so obviously the new yeah. brand. Lovely, lovely guys. Amazing. But yeah, so like, I'm in the bar that night. Uh, I've got my first professional match the following morning. Can't sleep. So I'm having a couple of quiet beers that turned into a handful of very noisy beers. Um, sat at the bar with them two and uh, someone else. I can't, remember, I can't remember his name now. But there was four of us. Right, we'll add it in the edit, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, like we're just chatting and the conversation just flowed and Matt and Don Birch, they're, they're just hilarious. And they're asking me about the prison work. Like they're asking me about like what, like what dieting experience I've got and just clicked. And we just had such a hilarious night. Conversation didn't end. Mm. Um, and that kind of rolled on to them saying, Oh, like we've got to get you to do an interview with darts mad at some point. Like, yeah, no worries. All over that. Just let me kind of, get this weekend out of the way first. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Following day, obviously, Pro Tour, uh, Joe Cullen, I've lost. I go out for a cigarette. There they are again. There's Matt and Dom outside. And there's this young kid with his mum. And um, uh, he's called over to Michael Smith. Michael Smith signed his little autograph book. And he's, like, just looking for players. And, of course, I've walked past unnoticed because yeah, I'm nobody like, I've never been on TV I'm not going to get recognised by this little kid that loves darts mm. Mm. anyway Matt Matt and Dom see this as an opportunity they go they nudge this kid oh yeah he's a professional too really oh, yeah Aaron Beanie yeah he's, he, he's a professional as well now like, but really and that was it they set me up for my first ever autograph <laughs> which was a bizarre moment like it's like I, I don't have an autograph like I've got a little scribble I do when I'm signing documents at work. That's, yeah. that's, that's the signature. That's not an autograph. I basically just wrote my name, but made the like the tail of the Y really fancy. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what most people do. They do they do what they sign and then go <laughs> <laughs> scribble it out. I, I don't have a signature. Like, how do I do an autograph? <laughs> um, weirdly, if I get bored in meetings at work now, I I, I do practice. <laughs> <laughs> Sad fact, sad fact right there. Trying to make a fancy autograph but in case I need it. <laughs> yeah, no, they, so I've ended up spending a night at a bar with them and they've made me feel relaxed enough that I can, I slept and I was smiling, you know, I was happy. Then they've got me my first autograph the next day. Then they've arranged my first ever interview, like since becoming professional. And um, yeah, didn't hear from them for a while, like added, like added me on Facebook and what have you. Occasional bit of banter back and forth. And uh, I, can't, I can't remember how the conversation even started, but it was saying about, oh, they, they asked about, oh, are you still going part-time? Because I was due to go part-time at the prison to yeah. focus more on the darts. But COVID lockdown, like we didn't know when the darts, so I stayed on full-time. And that just spurred a conversation. I was like, oh, how are you guys faring like, with your businesses like, with lockdown? They went, actually, we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, we've 
consolidate a few things and uh, we might have a new venture. Okay, like we wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> and it was all kind of really covert. Yeah, but before Loxley was a thing, they approached me and said, we want to sign you. Like, we've like, we've, we've like thought you were brilliant, like such a character, like the darts mad thing, like whether your darts are flying or not, like you've, you've, you've got some sort of personality, like you're the sort of thing we want. Like mm. we, we, we can have you at our, like anything to do with the Loxley brand and know that there'll be some form of entertainment. It, you won't go quiet. You're not going to be shy. And they're like, the personality for our, like for us is more important than the talent right now. Mm. Like the talent will come. You have it. You just need to settle in. Like, And they're just so complimentary and say, so, yeah, that was it. I ended up signing for Loxley. And it weren't until I signed, they said, right, so we've, we've got a couple of players signed. We're looking at a few others. Like we want you it was like some negotiation with a contract. Yeah, signed. And then that next thing I know, I'm in a group chat with like them two, Matt Edgar, Ryan Searle, and the Muffin Man, Steve. The Muffin Man! And <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. More often than not, that group chat is not really about the merchandise. It's just ridiculous banter. Yeah. This is not a sensible company. They are exactly what I want. Like, exactly. I've got, I've got, I've got this brilliant company that back me the whole way, make me laugh while I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, and literally, they provide quality gear. Like, yeah, they do. They're, they're just they're they're brilliant. And I've got this manager that I can have like three hour long face FaceTime chats with. Again, we don't even talk about darts half the time. It's just nonsense. Like. And this is what I've got around me, and it's it's no pressure. It's I'm, I've got good people around me. If you Matt do a Dom, job you love with people around you that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Honestly, that's why I need, I need to jog the prison on. <laughs> 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 so yeah, win, win the world championship, yep. leave the prison, and yep. I'm, I'm I'm golden. Then we're going back to goals now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've stepped it up a bit from the second round. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. There's goals and dreams. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't know if you know, but um, but obviously the Loxy guys uh, gave me a call quite early on in the in, when when my channel was very much. I mean, it's still in its infancy. I've only just recently passed six months, but um, but yeah, they gave me a call and I had a chat with them and very much how how you feel about them. They are so down to earth. Love their darts. They're I love That's the company so ethos. They just they just want to be, you know, they want everyone to have a good time. They really want to provide good stuff. They want to listen to feedback. They want to listen to, you know, to, to what the players want, what they can give. And uh, they, they really are a great, you know, I, I, I share absolutely everything I can of theirs because they're just such amazing people. And um, yeah. I wish them all the best. And, uh, you know, they send me lots of stuff to review and everything, thankfully. So I'm always very thankful for that. And um hopefully do much, much more with them in the future as well. Hopefully I will as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully you'll be negotiating a little bit more of your contract when you go, well, I'm going to be champion next yeah. year. So, uh... <laughs> uh, right. with, their, with their backing, I can't go wrong. No, you can't. can't go wrong. Now, um, we also have another thing in common, and that's Thornton Ooh. Darts. Uh -huh. now, I have my own set being made as we speak, uh, designed by the ever so talented Zach Thornton. Um, how was it working with him to design your darts? Um, it was a, <laughs> it was bizarre because, again, like Matt and Dom, like that's that was their go-to guy. Mm. Um, so we 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 I, I kind of knew what I wanted. So we had the design and there was a few tweaks and we had another group chat, which was myself, Zach, Matt and Dom. And that just descended into an endless ream of pictures being WhatsApped across like, what like this? No, like this. What about this kind of, like, no, no, no. And it was, <laughs> like, I'm glad like, they settled on black. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really bizarre that we managed to design those darts without ever having a phone call, <laughs> not once. Yeah. I still couldn't tell you what Zach's voice sounds like. <laughs> not a clue. <laughs> it was all done 
just by text and photos. Just it's so strange. Yeah. They're like, how do you hold a dart? So I'll just like hold a dart, take a photo. Like, oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> how far are they off, off of your uh, original 27 gram darts? <laughs> Very. Very different. I mean, it's, it's got a, a sign. If you haven't seen it, guys, it's got a very significant scallop in it, which is very, very trendy at the moment. Lots of scallops coming out. But I mean, what is it about the scallop that you liked? And did you have a scallop beforehand, or is this something you went? Actually, I want, I want a bit more reference. No. So my old set of darts, um, because the way I throw my darts go in the board flat. Like I've. My, I don't know why. Like my mum and dad both play. They throw darts go in at a nice tilty angle, mm-hmm. so you get that. Yeah, excellent. Mine always went in flat, or even inverted. Right. So I got them darts because they were wider at the thr- uh, wider at the front, and then tapered down to kind of the stem width. Mm-hmm. So they were really chunky at the front, and. That made my darts go in at a really good angle. You know, it did make my game a little bit better. You know, you, you only have to look at Q school. The 180s, 140s were going in. You know, I could group them. But where I had them for 13 years, the grip had pretty much gone. They are almost smooth. Um, there was no grip on them. And where there was, although it had the taper and it was just the whole way down, um, there was no kind of discernible place to hold it and I found myself a lot of the time like a lot of my issues with my or inconsistencies with my throw because of my grip so I wanted a scalloped dart Mm. and I wanted to try and get away from that like the fat front end because the shape I mean if, if if you threw them right they went right but if you had a bit of a heavy connection like with a dart, there was a bounce. Yeah. It was really creating, like, yeah, big good, differences. Yeah, like a, we're, we're talking almost three centimetre bounce mm. from dart to dart. Mm. So <clears throat> I knew it was costing me. So we went for the like the real tapered nose and the scallop. The scallop is, I mean, we got that scallop the whole way around. But literally, all I do, my thumbs in that. Because if my thumbs in that, then the rest of my hand. Well, should sit in the same place every time. Mm. And it was just, it was just a way to try and get me consistency, mm. um, and change the shape to get the group in and yeah. without the bounce. Um, it took a bit of adjusting, but within like when I got the prototypes, we're talking within three days. I already knew I was grouping and scoring better than I was with my other darts. It was the right move. And you stepped down and, to the 24 grams, I think they are, right? Yeah. When Peter Wright tells you your darts are too heavy, you do kind of listen. Like yeah, yeah. The man, the man clearly knows what he's doing. I mean, he's played with a few, so he might have a rough yeah. idea. Yeah. And um, and he's quite good. He, yeah, he ain't done bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah. So, like, I was. I was just taking on board what people were saying. And, like... I, I know, like, because one of the things I always used to do in the Archway and District League, especially uh, the Boston, um, <laughs> when we get there, they, this is, again, before I got my tour card, um, we're messing around, and one of their team, who's quite good, I'm sure you know who, tall glasses, mm-hmm. <laughs> he was saying about, hitting 180s with like a certain different numbered set of darts or different total sets in one night. So I was like, I'm going to beat it. And that night I, I managed to hit 180s with, I think it was 11 different sets of darts just messing about like on the practice board and on the match board, like after the match. And, and it was just like, as soon as I hit a 180, right, right, your set of darts. And I was like, I'm going to beat him. And um, it, I thought I can throw any set of darts. It's, it's, it's not about the darts. The darts will make a difference. So I knew dropping the weight, changing the shape, I would adjust. Yeah. And, the, yeah, I, I, I have. And, I'm, <laughs> and I'm, I'm still hitting the doubles like I was with my old darts. 
I'm still, you know, it hasn't affected that side of it. And the grouping's better. It's a funny thing with darts because um, I get a lot of people, obviously my channel's quite um, done, done a lot of review stuff. So I get a lot of people asking me a lot about darts. There is obviously the difference in people's throws, what they like, whether you dart mm-hmm. sit up, whether you want them sitting down, whether you've got a more direct throw, whether you loop, et cetera, et cetera. But it's, it's always an interesting thing. And I always say this to people, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on a set of darts. It's just whether or not they're more suited or not. The ones that are more expensive, quite often they might be endorsed by a player or maybe they've got fancy materials or fancy cuts that cost more money because it's obviously in the machine for longer. But it doesn't matter. This is a game that you can play with three bits of metal that have points on it with some some, flights on it. It's a simple game to play, a very hard game to master. Yeah, agreed. As simple as that. And... And I, I think, you know, I've I've hopefully got a set of your darts coming along as well. So I'll be doing a review on those. So look out for that and I'll tell you uh I'll I'll tell you what I think. Twenty four grams a yeah. tiny bit heavy for me, but I think with the uh, with the scallop at the rear it'll be it'll sit quite nice. So uh, I'm looking forward to looking forward to trying those because scallops are very in at the moment. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I've yeah. I've seen one other uh YouTube dart reviewer review my darts i believe it's uh the clash of tungsten he uh he enjoyed the darts very much i believe they're now his actual daily his match use darts, dart. yeah and i speak to ross quite a lot <laughs> he's uh he's a lovely guy um does does lovely videos as well and he was he was so impressed with those so uh yeah, it's, I like the fact he was wearing my shirt while he was testing my darts as well. Yeah, well, I'm I, I was hoping to be wearing your shirt now for the interview, but I haven't been sent one yet. So I'm going to get onto the boys after uh, after this interview comes out and say, look, you know, when I do the Loxley stuff, I want to be in your shirt. They'll probably say, yeah, well, send us some money then. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's a it's a really nice dart. If you haven't seen it, guys, um, check out the Loxley website and uh, and have a look. It is uh, it's very unique looking, uh, very very popular. And uh, and get them get them for Christmas. Why not? Why not? Absolutely. Now, um, has it been hard to adapt um, your new life as a professional player with with your with your friends and your family? Where, you know, are you always on the go? You've got this this second job and stuff. I know it's a bit different with COVID, but you know, do you do you have as much time for for, for friends and family at the moment? Um. Yes, uh, I didn't. Like pre pre COVID lockdowns and everything, like the world coming to a standstill, when the pro tours were weekends, no, um, and that's why I knew I had to go part time at work because I was literally working Monday to Friday, finishing work, driving straight off to Wigan Barnsley, mm. getting there for like eleven o'clock at night, getting a few hours of sleep before then pro tour. Saturday, Pro Tour Sunday, drive straight back to London, do my washing and ironing, get back in work Monday. And it's just like, I'm exhausted. I, I, I'm I, not practicing enough. I'm getting maybe an hour with blurry eyes. I'm not seeing my family because I'd normally go back like, to Kent and see them on a weekend. And it was, it was hard work. Um, but since where we've had COVID, obviously there was no darts for a lengthy period and now they're doing these like five or six day series Mm. what a dream they i don't have to worry about putting in the big like the 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 big three to four hour practice sessions like consistently every week like multiple times when i come back from one of them like week-long series i know i can have a week of just having a bit of a throw for fun Mm. um But then when they announce the next one, well, I've got a few weeks, build up the practice, really, you know, make sure I'm comfortable where I need to be. I book the entire week off of work, which work are fantastic. I get whatever time I want. They're really supportive. And yeah, in between, I get to have my life. So I've got the prison and my social life, and then I've got my darts and my social life. Because I mean, so, one of one of the big criticisms um, at the moment seems to be, you know, you've got a lot of high profile players who are saying, "Look, there's just there's too much being asked of us in the professional game," you know, and there's so much pressure to sort of earn that money and keep the money, keep your place, and everything like that. And you have to mm-hmm. have to end all these things, and there's a lot of obligations you'll have from then your sponsors and things like that. So mm-hmm. it is a very demanding thing. I don't think people realise, you know, the extent of of how how demanding it is being on the tour. Oh yeah. 
I mean, I'm fortunate. Like, I have a good job. Um, I don't go to the. I don't go to these tournaments thinking I need to make round three to pay my bills this month. I don't have that. Like, it's the PDC money is extra money for me, um, which is fortunate. But obviously, there are the guys that is their sole earning and. Yeah, if you're if you're one of the top thirty two, the top thirty two guys especially, they have a lot of commitment with sponsors and TV and having to like the PDC have put out their own things. Like I'm sure people have seen the the, the forfeit darts challenges that um, Russ Bray announces and everything that go on online and a lot of that stuff. Like they have to, they, they, you have to do that. Like you you are in the media. You you're a professional sports personality. Yeah. You're not just a dart player, you're a sports personality. Um, I'm bottom bottom of the barrel and I've got a full-time job which has its own perks and it has its downsides. But yeah, it is it is full on, especially for them. Like, you have to remember, some, some of the guys were recently at the Rico Arena in Coventry for uh, the Winter Series and the Grand Slam and the Players' Championships Finals. There were some people that were literally in that hotel for five weeks without going home to their families. And mm. that's, a, that's a commitment. Mm. It's, it's not, I, I love it. I absolutely love it, but I'm only there for the pro to, like the, the pro tours, like these series. I'm, I wish I was doing some of the TV stuff, but it, it's a, it's a, it's a lot, it's a life on the road for a lot of the guys. And that is tough and I don't think people realise and appreciate you know you, you have a lot going on you don't get your sleep and you're playing the next day and you know they don't they don't know that they just think oh he's playing rubbish you think, well you don't know what's going on there's a lot of things a lot of factors and um, you know it's, it's tough it is tough um, you know we, we obviously we, we can't do the interview without mentioning COVID Um obviously yeah. been a massive, massive impact on a lot of people, but I think you've actually done quite, you know, it's been quite reasonable for you. Um, I, w- I watched your interview with, uh, with a chap in the Netherlands from another channel. And, um, yeah. and you, you seem to suggest that, you know, actually COVID was quite reasonable. You've got quite a lot of practice done and uh, it's probably quite good move in it, you know, considering. Yeah. I mean, f- for me, it's worked out. Yes. I miss my family. Like, I've only seen my family twice since February, mm-hmm. um, March. Like, yeah, I miss my family. Um, I miss being able to go and do the pub league stuff. Like, there's there's certain social aspects that have gone, but it's like I say it's changed the PDC's like weekend pro tour scenario to these week long series, which like I say works so much better for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing like. 27 28 days without a break like my days off from work were days in the tournament mm. and then i'm straight back in the prison this is actually giving me time to focus on darts time to focus on my job um within the prison i do a few specialist kind of roles which covid put some of what i do in quite high demand and i've had a temporary promotion um, which has really benefited me in my work there. Um, it, it's benefited my darts. I mean, you only have to look. There was a really, really flattering um, piece of statistical work that went onto Twitter after the summer series, where it showed like the top five people with improved averages, like for the summer series compared to pre-COVID and the the five with the biggest decrease. I was number one on the increased averages. So it showed that I'd had that bit more time. Like I had, I was, I was now getting my weekends to rest and relax and be ready to go to work fresh faced and still have the energy to practice my darts and really actually focus on it. And yeah, like the last, the last couple, like the, the winter series, I had some quite disappointing averages. Um, but yeah, like you say, like different like things are 
things are a bit weird. Like you get a little bit cabin feverish when you're in the bubble. Like people don't realise that you go to these, you get tested for COVID the day before play even commences. And you have to wait for that result to come back. You're locked in a room. I can't go out and smoke. Like, I can't see other people. Like, you're just there, real cabin fever moment. Yeah. Like, you've got... You How long does it take? Um, varies. Uh, like, that first, the first one, the summer series, I had my test at 11 o'clock in the morning uh, one day, and I got my result, uh, I think, was about quarter past eight the following morning. I finally got my result. Then we had the autumn series in Germany. Uh, I'd done my test and I was I was more prepared. Now, you know, I'd, I'd brought myself a, a tablet so I could watch some uh, stuff on that. Mm-hmm. I've got some entertainment. I've got snacks. I, I'm, I'm sorted. I can survive this. Four hours, the test come back. Oh, no the efficiency. Now, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, for this, like, the recent winter series at Coventry, it was a much quicker turnaround not the four hours, but yeah, yeah, it was much quicker than it was for the summer series. Yeah. So you are you're locked away, and that kind of plays on your mind. Some people like it. I'm I'm not a fan. <laughs> like, I'm a prison officer. I lock people up. Don't lock me in a room. Ah. It's like if I'm locked in a room, I'm taking hostage. This ain't a good situation. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, trust me. I've had all of the locking a prison officer jokes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got. I mean, are there any um, like transferable skills that you've taken on from your uh, from your main job? I mean, obviously, you have to be, I guess, mentally pretty strong to be able to put up with the abuse and psychological games and things like that. So, I mean, does that? Do you think that anything in your normal job has helped you with your uh, with with your darts? Yeah, I'd I'd say it has. Like it's it's. Like I, there's, there's, there's like 21 year olds that are like four times my size telling me they're going to kill me. And you just have to remain calm. You know, I shaking like a leaf on the inside thinking if this goes, he's going to, I ain't winning this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's that ability to kind of try and compose and remain calm. Hmm. Um, which is why I stand by the fact that my job helped me get through Q school. Like out, out of that day, it was four or five of my games. I was two or three nil down, coming back and winning last leg deciders. And it was all last leg decider, last leg decider. It's, yeah, like that That panic never really sets in unless I've already got that panic when I walk to the hockey, which I keep doing at qualifiers. I don't know why. I'll get through it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. I do. I adapt. I change. I improve. Yeah. But yeah, no, there are definitely some, definitely some transferable skills. And 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 how have worked reacted to? Uh, how have they reacted to your success? Uh, really well. Like, yeah. I, my my governor has literally told me whatever time off I need for the darts I can have, because normally we have to kind of compete for, for like time. leave and stuff and. You can, only, you can only have so many officers off. You need enough there to keep it running. So but you have to compete for the time off. I don't. Um, if it's for the darts, I've got it. Um, they're really supportive. Um, they were really helpful in like the beginning of the year with guidance on, you know, what I can say, what I can't say. Because, you know, you have to be careful. This is what you talk about when it comes to the prison. Mm. Um yeah, like there's been a lot of promotion of kind of my achievement. Um, and especially as it was playing darts for the prison service, which is where I got my start in coming out of just playing once a week in a pub to go into Super League to actually people giving me a bit of backing and even financial support to enter Q School. Mm. Um, that, that all come from playing darts for the prison. Um, and that's the reason my darts are black, black with white stripes. They represent a prison epaulette. There you go. Like, I didn't know that. That's a, that's a nice, interesting fact. Yeah, that's that's the colour scheme. That's why it's got the, the rings. Like it's because you have stripes on the epaulette for whatever grade you are. And so, yeah, the white rings on the black, the, the darts meant to kind of represent a prison epaulette. Mm. 
nice. little nod to where my start comes from. Yeah, no, I like that. I like I like when it's got a little bit of personality in the uh, in the darting design. So it's a nice little uh, nice little element there. I thought it was particularly classy as well that um, that you decided when you were going to go part time, they were struggling obviously a bit, and you decided, well, actually, no, look, you know, I'm not, I guess, needing to be going off to all of these different things because you know there's not as much on, so I'll I'll stay on and uh, and do it more. So I thought it was quite a nice classy touch from you. So tip the cap to yeah. you, good sir. Yeah, it was, things were rough at the start. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. I imagine. Have Have you? Have, you know, do any of the do any of the um, inmates? I was going to say prisoners, but I think inmates are probably more more correct way of saying things. Uh, do any of the inmates uh, know about you? Give you any stick or any compliments? Um, quite a few, no, yeah. um, because my live stream match I played against Callum Rids uh, at the Autumn Series was actually shown on ITV4, which is a channel the prisoners have. There you go. <laughs> Stick on. Um, it's Aaron. Yeah. All right. It's Mr. Beanie. Oh my God, it's Mr. Beanie. Uh, yeah. So, and like word got around, because um, there's, there's me and one other officer that play decent level darts. Yeah. And we both represented the English prison service in international matches. Uh, against the Danish prison service and me and him have a lot of banter about darts and other people have banter because like, they always ask like well, which one of you has won this which one of you has won what who's better um, so a lot of the prisoners kind of over here and join in with some of the dark banter like oh did, did you beat Mr. Nerdin this time like yeah they go, yeah I got him this time uh, <laughs> so a lot of prisoners knew I played darts and of course when it when, when I won the tour card and became professional, there was an outpouring of like support and emotion like, like from my colleagues. Like, I've, been, I've been there over a decade. There's a lot of people I'm really close to. And they're like, they were really chuffed for me. So, of course, prisoners overhear this and they're like, oh, so he's good then? Like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that one. He, him, that one with all the tattoos. He's the one that's really good at darts. Mm. And then, of course, that, that, that match got shown on ITV4 and there were prisoners telling me like exactly what out shots I hit and like what leg you were like, you've done really well there, but like, oh, then he done that. And it's like, you actually have watched that. I yeah, know yeah. you have. because you're, you're telling it throw by throw. Yeah, yeah. No, they're really supportive. Like I get a lot of support from prisoners. That's brilliant. No negative at all. I mean, you mentioned obviously your, your tattoos and I know that that was influenced for your shirt as well. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, um, I, th- I think it's a really good-looking shirt. Um, I know it's really, really popular. Um, obviously, w- one of the areas of influence I have is is the reviews, and I have a lot of people ask me about things. And the Loxley guys were like, you know, what do you, what do you think of this and everything? I think it's a really you've got you've got the obviously like almost home and away with the the black and white shirt and the uh, uh, the swirls, and you've also got and then you sort of the, the the almost like broken triangle glass. But it's a, it's, a, it's a nice shirt. I don't think I've seen you wearing it as much. I think a lot of the stuff that I've seen. Uh, was early days stuff, but uh, yeah. my friend the other day was like, "I haven't seen him wear it. I haven't seen him wear it." I was like, "I'm pretty sure he, he he's wearing it." I wore it every day um, for autumn series and winter series, but I only had the one live stream match. That was the Callum Ridd's one where I am wearing the proper shirt. Yeah, but yeah, no, that that is what I wear when I play. I promise you, I've I've played ten, no, eleven PDC matches wearing the beanie shirts. It's just, you only get to see one because I haven't made the telly proper yet. Which, but, yeah, uh, no. which one do you like though? The white one or the black one? Put you on the spot. I, which one more? I, like they're, they're both brilliant. I know they are. Um, and most, <laughs> most, most people always say, oh, that, that black one's brilliant. I prefer the white. Do you? The, the white one would be my go-to, yeah. There you go. Fantastic. Um, Again, White and black prison service nod. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. This, you know, we're finding out more. This is uh, this is one of the reasons that I wanted to to get you in as well because I think there's a lot of people who don't necessarily know your story, and uh, I think the more they get to know you, the more support you can get from uh, from people moving forwards as well. So um, I think cool. it's a lovely little touch that I like that. Now, um, 
do you uh, do you get much time to watch um, watch any YouTube videos about darts? The YouTube world of darts is obviously growing. I'm a very very small part of it, but it's a it's a wonderful community, very very supportive in the same way that the darting world is. You know, we all try and help each other out and do lots of lots of things to try and entertain, inform, and amuse. I yeah, there is definitely a lot out there. No, but I don't watch as much as I probably should. Is what I'll say to that. We, we, we're going to segue into Edgar TV now. Uh, I imagine that uh, you get you must have plenty of banter in your group with Edgar TV and uh, and with Edgar because he's he's great fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's he's not a well man. I don't. Think. <laughs> we know this. <laughs> no, we we do have some really good banter, and it's because I say quite often now it is me, Matt, and Ryan Searle that practice together yeah and ryan is such a sensible nice man yeah yeah how how he puts up with me and matt i have no idea like he actually like he shares hotel rooms with matt how he ain't killed him i don't know yeah yeah <laughs> i mean the thing is with ryan you think oh heavy metal he's going to be you know an absolute nutcase and everything but he's he's not he's 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 very relaxed chill he's he comes across so nice and just pleasant you know just that's that's him yeah yeah. That, that is literally him in a nutshell. Like he's just a really nice, pleasant, fairly sensible guy. I want to see him at a concert. Though. I want to see if that hair goes. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, that's I'm my challenge that. for 2021 is go to a concert with Ryan Searle and get him headbanging. <laughs> Achieve well, I think. Yeah. yeah. We, we did have a discussion about music and it turns out, I think my music taste is heavier than his. Really? I might, I might, have, to, I might have to steal the nickname. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're after one. I mean, you know, I, I watched, like I say, I watched that interview with the uh, with the chap from the the Netherlands Dark Channel, and uh, and he's like, you know, have you got a nickname? And he's like, well, everyone calls me Beanie. You know, I think is it, is it your mum and, and your sister or someone? Only only people who call you <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Like, when you got when you got the surname Beanie, you know, it's always going to get used more than your first name. It's quite an English thing, though. I mean, uh, everyone calls me Kerr. You know, obviously, obviously, I don't get that within the darting world as much. But uh, you know, I tend to have it on like the back of shirt. You know, it's it's a football thing as well, I guess. So uh, yeah. it's a very common sort of English thing. Um, but yeah, I think Beanie works fine almost as a nickname by itself. So uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. We'll uh, we'll see if uh, heavy heavy metal can be stolen. I don't know if uh, Ryan will fight you for it. We'll have to see. Just have to wait for the Loxley boys to make the beanie beanie hat as well. We need a beanie. Yeah, beanie. I, you know, I'm. Uh, I'm pitching so, the idea. Now, um, so my captain, I, I, I was like, look, you know, I, I want to think of a, a question because, uh, you know, I knew that we were obviously doing this interview, and I said to him, look, look, you know, any questions you can think, and he was like, no, I haven't got a question. He said, but why don't you wear a beanie? He said, I just think it'd be a fun way in and everything. I was like, I'm packing up my flat at the moment. I'm actually in the process of moving. So I don't actually have any of like those things that I'm like, I can't wear the beanie. It would have been a lovely way in, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I, you've got to have, you've got to have the beanie the merchandise with, with beanie. I, I will get, I will get beanie beanie hats on sale somewhere. It's beanie gonna beanie hats. They should have been pre-Christmas. I'm sure they would have been a big seller. It's getting cold. So <laughs> now, um, now that the viewers know you obviously a little bit better right what do you do for fun outside of darts do you have any hobbies or interests or anything that you sort of put to the side while you're while you're on this this journey um I, i'm i'm one of the people i just i like to do just random stuff like uh, occasionally me and like me and my dad would, like go do archery love mm -hmm. a bit of archery like done some axe throwing recently. That's good fun, isn't uh, it? Oh yeah. Actually, I saw, I saw because I've got you on, uh, I think on Facebook as well, and I saw you going for the archery stuff, and I thought, oh, is this, is this publicity for the Loxley element of it? Was it, was it separate or was it a through through Loxley or? That that actual um, the one that you saw that was um, my nephew's uh, birthday present. Yeah. So but must me. My so me and my brother, so his two uncles and my dad, so, and his, his granddad, yeah, took him all to this archery. And, um, yeah, I didn't to be honest, the Loxley thing never even crossed my mind. I think it was booked before, like, I even signed with Loxley, yeah. Lo, lo and behold, <laughs> uh, um, while you're there, 
lo, lo and behold, like there's a photo of like, there's a actually like surprisingly it's a really good photo of me, like stood there with the bow, full extension. Yeah, and I put it I've put it on a uh, Facebook, and I think it was literally an hour and a half later. I get an alert on Facebook from like the Loxley page, and it's like Aaron Aaron Beanie. Uh, Loxley sign player getting into the Robin Hood spirit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> stolen this photo from my Facebook <laughs> and put it on the company page. Uh, I understand why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, are you going to pay me for that? Or, are you, you know, you're just, you're just stealing all my work, <laughs> all, my, all my pictures now. <laughs> Axe throwing is good fun as well. I did that um, fairly recently. I went, uh, well, I say fairly recently, obviously the last year has almost been a write-off, but uh, um, went to um, Budapest for a stag do and axe throwing was great fun. Really good fun. Oh, really fun. You've, you've just got to find where you're, where you're standing and make sure your rotation is right. But once you've got the hang of it, it's, it's, it's all right. Literally, I found the easiest thing to do is not to think about it, just welly it as hard as you can, and it does tend to go. <laughs> that was all I did. It's like proper welly. And it, yeah, that's going in. We went We went for a, a friend of mine, Stag do, and uh, he was not great, but somehow he managed to get the, the back end of the, the axe. It was a one-sided axe. It wasn't like a two-sided yeah. one. And he got the back end to stick in. I was like, he got so fed up, he obviously lobbed it, and it's just gone, yeah, yeah, I'll give up. I'm just going to go in. <laughs> That takes some effort. <laughs> yeah, I think he was that fed up, but uh, <laughs> it yeah, is definitely. really good fun. It is good fun. But yeah, so uh, no particular hobbies. You just enjoy um, lots of random things, doing things when uh, when you get the time. Yeah, I, a bit of canoeing, a bit, a bit of archery. A bit of, like if I'm just proper chilling at home, I'm not. I don't really watch much TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, the occasional uh, binge watch a box set, but. Um, Playing PlayStation, I am a bit of a gamer. Yeah, yeah, d- yeah. Do you play with um, uh, with the Loxley Boys? No, no. I, I imagine no. Ryan to be a gamer. I don't know if he is or not. Uh, he he enjoys a few little things. Yeah, yeah. They, I know that Matt's know. also playing Among Us. Yeah, which is some um, strange online. Imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've watched a few of his streams, and uh, you know, it's, it, it's it's quite good fun. I still haven't worked out quite what it is, but I'd imagine that you know, you guys would. All right, we'll have a round. Let's play FIFA tonight, all on the PlayStation. Uh, no, he's, he's so he does take his. I think it's Nintendo Switch away with him when yeah. he's doing the darts. So, like ten o'clock in the morning, we're all on the practice board, and I do get a full debrief of who won what the night before, <laughs> um, how it was won, the hilarious mistakes. Um, but yeah, like we throw darts and I, I listen to their tales of how Matt managed to convince everyone that he wasn't the killer in Among Us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hiding in vents and, and yeah. then Ryan, Ryan cursing him for the some like dodgy manoeuvre he pulled on a Mario game. Like. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you we, we chance professional dark players, so yeah 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 but you know this is the thing is um i said it's very very accessible but you realize very very quickly you know it, it's it's one of those very personable sports that you realize people are people you know yeah. we all go to the toilet we all watch tv and netflix we all know what those things are we all have you know normal lives that we get on with and uh it's it's it's, it's quite good fun from that uh that um side of things but um in the group chat, did you uh, did you by chance get Matt messaging you saying I'm going to get the hottest crisp and put it in uh, in, in Jody's <laughs> in Jody's bowl because that was one of his recent pranks and I was I was wondering whether he let anyone know about it or if it was very covert. COVID. I, he he never he never put uh, pen to paper. There is no evidence, but I may or may not have heard him say that whilst having a practice session. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a naughty schoolboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no he really is and he's he is he's a man child yeah i don't know if anyone saw it um he i can't remember it must have been one of his youtube videos but yes it was it was one of his youtube videos uh he'd done a review of the winter series and he actually within the review right at the end he made mention to a fart now i I was stood behind him when he done it. 
he did vacate three entire practice boards. People just walked away. And of course, the uh, problem was like me, him and Ryan were doing like a proper practice game and we were being sensible at this point. Yeah. yeah Matt, Matt dropped his guts, emptied three entire practice boards. And, like Normally you've got four, five, six people at each practice board because, you know, there ain't that many. There's a lot of us. Yeah. Yet three of them vacant. Yeah. Within seconds. Ryan left as well. It's like, oh, I can't stand it either. So I'm, I'm stood a few feet back. He thought it was hilarious. I did as well. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> There's part but, of me thinking, yeah, I'll probably have to edit this out. But actually, he's going to go, no, 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 you don't edit it out. I'm proud of that. I'm claiming that. That's the type of person he is. He's literally put it on YouTube himself. As one of his <laughs> yeah. way- I've cleared three boards. Of- you do better. That'll be the next challenge he puts out. <laughs> oh, honestly, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh dear. Right. I've got a quick fire round. Oh, well, no, here we go. Okay. So I want you to answer right, quickly. Right. Some of them will be a choice. So you'll have one or the other. Other ones will be your okay. first response. Okay. Okay. Go. Do you have any pets? Uh, no. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Favorite food? Pizza. Favorite holiday destination? Greece. Favourite professional player? Simon Whitlock. Favourite double? Oh, eight. Pasta or pizza? Ah, already answered that. Pizza. Ice cream or ice lolly? Ice cream. Half full or half empty? Half full. Football or rugby? Rugby. Too hot or too cold? Too cold. Matt or Dom? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, wounded. Oh, I, uh, I tried to get you by being quick to see if you would answer. <laughs> I, I don't want an answer to that one. Matt Edgar or Ryan Sell to go further in the world? Ryan Sell. I think he has got an easier draw looking at things. I say easier. Not I don't even. want to be disrespectful to the people that are in there, but he's also on really, really good form as well. I was going to say, so. not even that. Ryan He's literally one of the unluckiest people I've ever met. That man is throwing great darts and encountering people, just having the game of their life constantly. Yeah, He's had yeah. real hard luck recently. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. I, I, I think, you know, I, I hope that both of them go very, very deep and do well. And uh, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, who do you think is going to win the Worlds? Who's your top tip? Oh... There's, there's, there's three on form players right now. I mean, it'd be ridiculous not to include Gerwin Price. Mm-hmm. That man is like he just consistently good. Peter Wright has a really good shout at main t- like, re- like yeah, just retaining that because um, he's had a couple of unlucky results, a couple of even, safe to say, poor games recently. Mm-hmm. He won't do that at Ali Pali. He will correct that. Yeah. And someone else who just seems to have woken up from a bit of a slumber, we're yeah. seeing an old MVG back. Right? I know, I know. I, and, I, you know, he's got a lot of stick recently um, about performance, but, I mean, you know, you're talking about someone who is, is you know, he has a seventh gear, he he is oh. he's just taken the game to a new level, and we know sometimes you can't always be there. But he's had a lot of adjustment, new darts. We there's suspect that he might have been uh, a little bit injured going through something, maybe an operation. You know, slight adjustment with with uh, he keeps on pulling his socks up. That you know, is he in? Is he you know having so, having some issues? But uh, I, I don't think we can discount MVG, and I'd oh, quite well. like to see him come back strong anyway. But if uh, let me phrase it a different way, if you're going to lose your tour card. Mm. but one person you can bet on, and if they win, that you get to keep it. Who is your tour card future going on? Pia. Pia. I think it's yeah. fair. I, I'd, I'd, to be fair, I wouldn't mind any of uh, any of them 
Uh, they're they're very informed, all deserving of it. Even uh, even Gerwin Price, I know that he upsets a lot of people, but he's entertaining, you know. And uh, and and like he, I don't, I genuinely don't think he does what he does to put anyone off. That's just him. Mm. The man's full of testosterone. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rugby player raw emotion. So um, no, yeah. I think that's uh, Peter Wright then for world champ. He's I think he's lowest off base, which I'm actually originally from uh, from Suffolk. So he's uh, he's not too far away from me. So uh, I wouldn't mind him uh, him doing it again. A local boy in the same way that you are here for uh, for, for while I've been here. So uh, absolutely. Anyway, uh, I think I've punished you enough. So um, I just want to say thanks for being a great sport and uh, letting my viewers get to know you a bit better. I'm sure you'll have every success and great success moving forwards. And hopefully when this is all over, we can go to the pub and have a pint and uh, maybe go to one of the Camden pubs and enjoy people walking past the hockey as we play and uh, have a catch up <laughs> on your progress and uh, and see how things are going. Oh, trust me, on the, pra- on the practice board, things are much smoother than you remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have improved. I just need to convert it into game on. Yeah, I mean, if if we didn't have lockdown, I'd be uh, I'd be going right. Whereabouts are you? I need a practice partner to get me up, so uh, I need to get my stand up. But uh, it is what it is, and uh, we'll get through it. Hopefully, it's going to be a soon much better they, year. As soon as they make a dartboard available, you name a day on there. Absolutely, we'll do it. So Done. thanks again, Mister Beanie. Um, where's my applause track? I'll add one in the edit. Um, <laughs> one, you start, you're starting to act like Edgar TV now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I try and put a little bit more production value, although he has got a really nice ent- intro now. And uh, um, you oh. know, he, he you only need to put a camera in front of him; he's good fun anyway. So, um, yeah, good old Matt. Um, one final thing, if you wouldn't mind, is just to tell everyone what they should do immediately after this video, which is to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Love Darts. Everybody, get down, click that button, subscribe, Love Darts. This man's great. Subscribe. That's wonderful. Thank you ever so much for your time. And uh, remember, guys, Love Darts.